Every major development project in recent history has been marked by widespread protests led by major NGOs. Now, an intelligence bureau report has said that foreign funded NGOs have been deliberately stalling development projects by manipulating people centric issues. The report specifically names Greenpeace as a threat to India's economic security. After these damning allegations, will the government now clamp down on the development sector and the NGOs that work in it? Gaurav Sound files this story. Dogged by massive protests that caused multiple delays, Reactor 1 of India's largest nuclear plant has finally reached full capacity. But were those delays part of a design? A new intelligence bureau report suggests they were. The report submitted to the Prime Minister's office this month says that foreign-funded NGOs are manipulating people-centric issues to stall development projects, causing a negative impact on India's GDP. The agency says that funding for these NGOs flows in purportedly for charitable causes and that these campaigns are focused on extractive industries, genetically modified foods and anti-nuclear issues. The Intelligence Bureau also says that reports prepared by these NGOs are used against India. If the funding is illegal or if anything is related to national security, which is a threat to the sovereignty of this country, all these are things if it comes into picture, so action will be taken. The damning report specifically names Greenpeace as a threat to national economic security, claiming that the organization contravenes laws to change the dynamics of India's energy mix. Greenpeace also stands accused of using its network to conduct anti-nuclear agitations and that it even attempted to take down India's coal-fired power plants and mining activity. The report warns that Greenpeace has now set its sights on India's infotech sector. We believe that this report is designed to muzzle and silence civil society who raise their voices against injustice to the people and the environment by asking uncom uncomfortable questions about the current model of growth. The Confidential Intelligence Bureau report alleges that NGOs like Greenpeace are actively conniving to stall India's economic growth story. It lists out instances in the power sector and now fears the same would be repeated in the IT sector. NGOs now fear that the government may come down on them with a heavy hand. With cameraman Ashok Bhanot, Gaurav Savant in Delhi for headlines today. The Intelligence Bureau report that I have in my hand says there are a total of 85,000 NGOs operating in the country, many of which are using foreign funds to indulge in mischievous activities to hamper social and economic development. Now this is a very, very serious charge. I want you to meet our guests for our program tonight. I want to begin by introducing Divya Ragunandan. She's the program director of Greenpeace India. They're the ones who've been specifically named and called a threat to India's national economic security that's the organization she represents greenpeace gautam navlakha is one of india's best known civil liberties activist joining us from his residence in delhi mahesh jet malani senior lawyer in the supreme court member of the bharatiya janta party and colonel rsn singh former raw officer everyone gets one clear uninterrupted minute to make their opening arguments and i want to tell our viewers once more how to participate use the hashtag center stage is the Intelligence Bureau right in saying foreign funded NGOs are derailing India's economic growth? Send your comments to us. We will get our algorithm to analyze these live. I want to begin this program by getting Colonel RSN Singh to explain to Gautam Navlakha and to Divya Ragunandan tonight why people should believe this Intelligence Bureau report because all NGOs are up in arms. They believe that this is a prelude to being prosecuted and targeted by the central government and the IB is laying the grounds for that. Why should people take the IB report seriously? Colonel RSN Singh, your time starts now. See, whenever IB gives a report to the MHA, there is nothing called alleged. It is based on facts. And we are here, we are discussing the illegality part of it, not the NGOs as whole. So, there, uh, as uh, the uh, data that you are reading out from the paper which you are reading out, it says there are 42,000 registered NGOs which have gro grown exponentially 
from 15,000 in 93 to to almost uh, um, uh, to almost 42,000 uh, in 2014. Out of these, only 56 percent are following the Foreign Control Regulations Act as stipulated by the, by the MHA. Only uh, only 55 or 56 percent are submitting their accounts for uh, audit to, uh, to the MHA. So here we are discussing the illeg illegality part. Now let me give you a very interesting... No, uh, your time is up. You have one minute. Your time for opening comments is up. You are saying that NGOs are not following rules. They are being funded by unknown bodies outside. There is no transparency in their funding. Divya Ragunandan, the body that you represent is being called a threat to national economic security and the intelligence bureau colonel singh says don't doesn't just put out allegations and charges they've done their fact finding this is a report this is an investigation and therefore these charges need to be taken very seriously divya ragunandan your time to respond starts now firstly uh, i think that at least in the in, uh, interest of transparency we all need to see the report that we're talking about we have absolutely no idea about these allegations that are being made against us. Uh, from what we've read from the news articles, we've been thoroughly misrepresented. Uh, also, a lot of uh, what is being said has been construed, misconstrued, and almost deliberately. Uh, we're clearly an organization that believes in sustainable development and inclusive growth. Sabke saath, sabka vikas. That's the way we interpret that. Uh, and clearly, this cannot... Uh, for, by any father, you know, any stretch of imagination be believed to slow growth and challenge economic development. I think we are clearly going to be a threat. We are a threat and we are a huge inconvenience to those uh, vested interests that actually want to push fast clearances and quick development by circumventing rules and processes. We will certainly be a watchdog and challenge all those things. You are saying that this is an attempt to browbeat and bully the NGO sector and prevent them from doing their job. Gautam Navlakha, the IB presents fact-finding reports in the form of an investigation. It's not an idle charge. It's been investigated by the Intelligence Bureau and therefore ought to be taken very seriously. The IB also believes that between 2 and 3 percent of the gross domestic product of our country gets shaved off or from the annual growth figures that we would register because of NGOs that are operating at the behest of foreign powers. Mr. Navlakha, your time, sir, starts now. I think this is, this is a typical uh, attempt at browbeating and silencing all those who question the model of development and growth that the, that the government wants to impose on people against their wishes who are fighting for the land, for the forests and for the rights and it's trying to ride roughshod over it by attacking and targeting. This has happened in the past on the UPA too when they attacked the Kudnakulam protesters by claiming that they were uh, uh, waging war and uh, accused them of sedition and etc etc this is nothing but an attempt at ramming down people's throat the model of development which favors the corporate in this country riding roughshod over people's interest or concerns and i think this is what it represents ib is not a paragon of truth it is known to have made serious errors and blunders in the past so I'm not going to take this. So your time is up, but you've made some very important points. You're linking it with a larger design. And that's something that Mahesh Jet Malani must respond to in his opening arguments that this could be the prelude to the government coming down hard on NGOs that want to act as honest watchdogs. You want to sell out to big corporates. That's the charge that NGOs are leveling. People uh, like Greenpeace will contest that. Gautam Navlakha will fight that, which is why you're building a case to take these NGOs down. Mr. Jet Malani, your time to respond starts now. You know, uh, uh, Rahul, I'm not going to say that the IB report is motivated like the others. Uh, and no more than I, no more than I believe that all NGOs in this country uh, have, a, have a vested interest and a predetermined ideology to subvert India's economy. But the IB report is, is a non-partisan report. Uh, it, it is an intelligence input and it actually is quite balanced. I mean, we, none of us have seen the IB report itself, but we've only had excerpts of it uh, as have appeared in the press. Now, the IB has admitted that most of the NGOs in this country do good work. 
it says that there are out of 85,000 NGOs, 17,000 NGOs are unregistered and it is really these unregistered NGOs which create a problem and try to subvert the economy. These NGOs not, not being registered lack, are lacking in transparency particularly uh, uh, in, uh, as regards the source of their funds and their, and their real objectives. Some of these NGOs and, and Greenpeace is one of them and I think it's come down, the IB report has come down. So your time is up. I'm coming back to you in just a moment. I want to take out the initial scores. These of course are completely beyond the control of our producers. The initial scores coming up on our screen right now and it's very interesting. Usually there's a fixed pattern. This one though is yo-yoing. 67% in agreement going up to 88 then coming down to 59 currently as well. 11 minutes into our debate it's at 59. Are foreign funded NGOs derailing the growth story? The number of people agreeing seems to be coming down. It's now time for a round of interjections. I want to get uh, Colonel RSN Singh uh, to speak first. Here is the overall score at this time. 53% positive, 47% negative. This is since the time we started this program this week, the closest uh, response that we've seen in terms of positives and negatives this could still go either way so all of you still have an opportunity to impress upon people watching this broadcast tonight why you are on the right side i want to go across first to colonel rsn singh because sir when such a serious charge is leveled against a body like greenpeace surely there must be some evidence to back it now you're saying this is not an allegation but we haven't seen the evidence if you're saying that greenpeace is derailing the india growth story show us the proof colonel singh Proof, I can tell you, this has been in papers that 23 NGOs were supporting Kejriwal uh, campaign in Varanasi who have got nothing to do with the electoral process. Navlakha, yes, if his uh, objective was so non noble, why does he require foreign funding? Does, uh, I mean, do only Westerners have this kindness and sympathy and uh, 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 empathy? 10,000 crores. Coming okay. every Not year. Navlakha is responding well, to you. 10,000 crores well, coming well, every year. Fact, you accuse somebody of taking funds, please find out your IB has completely missed out if he doesn't know that I don't take foreign funding. That itself proves that you do not speak truth. Please I, I verify have, facts before you open your I, mouth. I have the figures which NGO has got how much and it is, it is there. You know whether I have taken money if you have not withdrawn your remarks. Who is so, I am talking about NGOs. Why are you taking it personally? And by the you way, by, by, by the way, what has... Anand, you accuse me, withdraw your demand. No, I will not withdraw. withdraw. I will not withdraw because you tell me what have you done for this country. Tell me. Except for creating hurdles, how many trees have you planted in this country? I'm what you have done you for this environment? Hurdles and obstacles. And what? When questions are raised about various projects, People have their oh, concerns so, about so, them. So you, and you these are only, not taken you, you, and you dismiss them. You, you only specialize in edu and you education. Say that IB education. Right. I mean, does IB run an auditing system where it can figure out that the ne negative impact on economy was up to two to three percent of GDP? What ridiculous things are we hearing today? I mean, come on, it looks like just a journalistic exercise by look, IB. Look, to look, Mr. Navlaka, look, 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 look. That is what it is. Mr. Navlaka, Mr. Navlaka, what and do you do for your living? I have done it in the past. You, you tell me, Koda, 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 you are making a killing out of NGOs. What do you do for your living? Except mo making money. I do not take... But if Colonel you know, RSN saying, no, one second, I don't want to lower the quality of our discussion. Just one second, allow me to come in. Because this is not about what Gautam Navlakha, Colonel no, Singh, does for his living. Hear, 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 me out. hear me out, hear me out, please. This is not about what one particular officer does for his living. There's a larger issue. You're leveling charges. He's saying those charges are not true. You are condemning these people without giving them the opportunity to speak. Surely there must be proof that you're an army officer. Okay, now Gautam Navlakha uh, is an NGO activist. He has the right to do what he wants. If you are damning him, should there not be proof, Colonel RSN Singh, instead of the wild sweeping charges? Where's the evidence? I'm asking you for proof. The, the report that you are reading of the MHA, it clearly gives out that which NGO has received how much from foreign contribution. It gives out how much has been received from the US, 
which is uh, so far at about 20,000 crores. The second highest donor has been Germany. The third highest donor has been UK and, uh, and uh, then uh, Italy. Who and has allowed it? Pardon? Who has allowed this money to come in that to fund NGOs in this country? That is, is what we are saying. That, that, that is what we are saying. Now, 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 now you tell me on the reverse side, on the reverse side, how many of these kind-hearted people are running NGOs abroad? How many Indian NGOs are Divya, there abroad? Raghunandan Why wants should to come in because Colonel RSN Singh please, Divya please. is questioning the inflow of foreign funds into NGOs which is coming in in the thousands of crores and that seems to be adequately documented and he's saying why would these people be sending in all this money unless they want to create trouble and for vested interest derail the India growth story Divya Raghunandan respond. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just want to make a, I mean, it, it's an absolutely ludicrous point to say that there is all this generalization of money coming in. Uh, and then there's a specific case of Greenpeace. I think it's well known Greenpeace's annual report is on our website, even though we are not mandated to put it up there. It's very, very clear that Greenpeace is, uh, believes in independent fundraising. All our money comes from individuals. Over 60% of all the money comes from Indian individuals that we raise all the, the money and all the audits are out there for all of you to see. I'd like to see the exact figures uh, in that report because we've, we've been denied that report and we don't know what we're talking about. So we've not got any evidence to show that Greenpeace is actually majority funded by a foreign NGO. The other thing that I want to point out is that this boogie of the foreign NGO comes every time. Uh, and ironically, when we're talking about, say, anti-nuclear, uh, protests or we're talking about anti-GM protests and both of which the government wants to push at the behest of multinational corporations sitting in various foreign countries trying to peddle their outdated you know high-risk technology on India so if that's not the foreign hand then what is you're leveling a counter charge and Mahesh Yet Malani must respond instead of questioning the NGOs it's big MNCs that are putting pressure on the government and getting the government to change their policy importing technologies that are no longer relevant that's the charge that Divya, Divya Raghunandan is leveling against the government playing into the hands of foreign MNCs how do you respond Mr. Jet Malani? Look first of all the government has done nothing this government nor the past government this is only an intelligence input from the IB which is an intelligence gathering agency nothing more and as again I repeat uh, Rahul it is a very balanced report it recognizes the good work done by many NGOs it does single out Greenpeace but Greenpeace will have a chance to respond to it there is no investigation there is no uh, there is no uh, in, in, uh, injury to reputation as far as uh, 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 Greenpeace is concerned what should really be done is if the government believes in the IB's report its intelligence inputs it should start a preliminary inquiry particularly against Greenpeace which seems to be the one uh, NGO which has been singled out by the IB report otherwise the IB report is extremely bad Divya Raghunandan is, the, IB, is the Greenpeace organization prepared for a full-fledged report full-fledged investigation Mahesh Jet Malani is saying the BJP government must probe is Greenpeace ready to have all its audits all its accounts audited madam absolutely we were happy and we welcome a group of people coming down to our office having a civilized conversation which is open and transparent where we can share all the information like I said all the information is already in the public domain as an annual report on our website it's available for everybody to look at if there's any further requests we're always happy to furnish it we just feel that the mode in which this is being done the the story I mean nobody knows how that story got out you know what elements of that story decided to come into that news report and what elements stay okay. uh, you know uh, undisclosed just, that's the problem with it just before We're i get into the last part of any center stage scrutiny. uh center stage twitter debate tonight i want to play out the live results at this time we've got 3 minutes to go so we'll have a final round coming in you can still join us and participate 53% now negative and 47% positive so now clearly there are more people who disagree Colonel R.S. Singh, with the charge that foreign funded NGOs are destabilizing the Indian economy and derailing growth. Now there are more people who are disagreeing. The number of people agreeing is actually coming crashing down. So you haven't been able to convince people so far who are responding about the veracity of the charges that the IB is leveling. And 
how do you respond to the points that have been made by Gautam Navlakha and also uh, Divya Raghunandan but before that Mahesh Jet Malani has his hand up because Divya has said she's prepared for a charge she's prepared for an audit let that audit happen why damn them publicly through such reports Mr. Jet Malani uh, Rahul yes. again this debate actually is a little misconceived. Why is As that? As I said, there's only an intelligence report uh, because because your, the, the subject matter of your debate is, is altogether extravagant. Because all you've got is an input saying that certain NGOs are acting to the detriment of the Indian economy. It doesn't taint all NGOs with the same brush. So in that sense, your, the question raised by your debate itself you don't like the question, but that could also be because you don't like the responses coming in tonight. But those responses are beyond my control. People have no, no, no. I, the I right to come loser. in and I'm, say what I'm they want. No, I'm but in the I'm final part, in the, no, in the final part, Colonel R. S. N. Singh, I want to understand from Colonel R. S. N. Singh, I want to understand from you the fear that NGOs are raising that this is a prelude to a larger action that the intelligence bureau is laying the grounds for the government to come down hard on the NGOs because they want to clear the way all the obstacles on the road of development need to be weeded out and that's the ground that's being laid Colonel Aras Singh Absolute, final comments absolutely not when Binayak Singh's trial was going on I don't know who in, uh, on, in this country allowed the members of the European Commission to descend here so what I'm trying to say that you know all this sympathy empathy and kindness ke is not, uh, only the westerners are not the repository of it we too are kind and sympathetic people we also inherently uh, environment is a concern to us and i ask these ngos what were the 23 ngos doing who are concerned with the environment what were they doing during elections in varanasi what we're doing uh, Gautam Navlakha do you want to and respond and this is the second time Colonel RSN yes. Singh is saying and, 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 and there is and, a point and, over and here which says that these and my NGOs last are funding Aam Aadmi Party and my why last are they funding the Aam Aadmi Party and, sir and, and my last and my last and my last point is Kejriwal's yes Kejriwal you know ask Rahul Rahul you can't ask me a question that pertains to Aam Aadmi Party and respond it no we are talking about NGOs here let me respond to the question no, I'm not interested in talking about NGOs in general. Mr. Anand has made specific charges against 23 NGOs now. Yes. He's brought it down to 23 from 85,000. No, no, I'm just giving you... the point you... is that... The, my point is, if this is government, MHA is responsible for looking after NGOs. It is all supposed, they are all supposed to submit their accounts and regularly MHA monitors their activities. If after 21 years, Intelligence Bureau comes up with a report which says that whose incompetence are they showing? They are expressing the incompetence of the government. No, but Gautam Navlaka, are NGOs getting a bit too process. paranoid when they suggest that this is part of a larger clampdown on the non-governmental sector, this is an IB report. The there could be, like, there no, could be weeds that need to be cleared. Paranoia. Why are we linking this and making it such a big fear when the problem could be more localized that the MHA might actually need to act against some rogue NGOs, Mr. Navlaka? Mr. Rahul Kanwar, you organized this debate that itself shows that you took this matter far too seriously. Therefore, let's not, uh, you know, beat around the bush. Let's face it as, as it is. The point is, in the past, very recent in the past, UPA2 also used the similar arguments to crack down on anti-nuclear movement and accuse them of being foreign funded when they were asking very fundamental issues of security. Time on the centre stage debate tonight. Everyone has made their points. It's a very divisive, very contentious issue. Let's see what the verdict of the centre stage audience is. It started very interestingly, and just bring the camera in closer so that our viewers can see, 67% when we started agreed with the assertion that foreign funded NGOs were derailing the growth story that jumped up to 88 after 5 minutes it came down to 59 since then it kept falling in the end 45% people agreed 55% of the people who are watching this broadcast and responded via Twitter live disagreed this is just at the end let's see the final aggregate results you've seen it for all those five minutes, here are the final results. 45% of the total number of people who responded on center stage tonight agree that foreign funded NGOs are derailing growth. 55% do not. 
Well, clearly this debate won by those who believe that foreign funded NGOs are not derailing the growth story, but there are lots of those who believe that they are. What is required now is proof and what is required is not for wild sweeping charges to be leveled, but for the charges to be localized and the culprits be charged, tried and proven to be guilty and not condemning the entire sector. For the time being, Gautam Navlaka, Divya Raghunandan, Mahesh Jetmalani and Karl Larasan Singh for joining me on the center stage face-off tonight. Thank you very much.